Last Thursday, uh, I was doing class, as we normally do on a Thursday night, and I pointed out to the folks that Thursday was a very significant day in the Christian calendar. And most people are saying, was it? <laughs> it was Ascension Day. Forty days after resurrection and ten days before Pentecost. So that next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday or Whit Sunday. Whit Sunday, White Sunday, gets its name from the fact that early uh, Christians, when they were baptised, put on a white robe and were baptised in water with a white robe. And so it became White Sunday, Baptism Sunday, Whit Sunday. Pentecost Sunday is a great day to get baptised, great day to get filled with the Spirit, great day to be anointed, wonderful. But it's preceded by ascension. And we, we so often quote, uh, you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you will be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and under the uttermost parts of the earth. It came out of Jesus' comments on Ascension Day. It's when he said that. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. We know these verses so well, but at times we miss the significance of this event. Luke wrote the Gospel of Luke, of course, and he wrote the book of Acts, and he tells in his opening verses to Theophilus, the friend of God, if that was his real name, it may have been, but it also could have been a name that protected his identity. But it means literally, friend of God. This first account I composed, dear friend of God, about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after he had by the Holy Spirit given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen. Taken up to heaven after he had by the Holy Spirit given orders to those whom he had chosen. To these he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. Gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, which he said, you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or epochs which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be witnesses both in Jerusalem and in Samaria and in Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest parts of the earth. And after he had said these things, he was lifted up while they were looking on and a cloud received him out of their sight and as they were gazing intently into the sky while he was going behold two men in white clothing stood beside him let me pause and say the most important events in the life of Jesus Christ and of his church are attended by angels don't discount the importance of ascension the angels showed up. Two men in white clothing stood beside them. They also said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in just the same way as you watched him go into heaven. In the version that's on the screen in verse, uh, oh no, it's King James, isn't it? No, we've got New King James, good. On the version that's on the screen in verse 11, it says, this same Jesus, this same Jesus. I want you to say that, this same Jesus. Say it again, this same Jesus, not a different Jesus, not a Jesus that we won't recognise in a body that we don't understand. This same Jesus. Which Jesus? This same Jesus. I like the old song that had the line in it, and you'll know him by the nail prints in his hands. This same Jesus. This same Jesus. This same 
Jesus. Why am I stressing that? Because we have this sense that it's all going to be very, very different and a bit airy-fairy and all that sort of thing. But Jesus is coming to rule and reign on this earth. On this earth. My Bible tells me he's coming to rule and reign on this earth for a thousand years. Which Jesus? The one who's all fancy and earth? This same Jesus. The one with the nail prints in his hands is coming to rule and reign on this earth. How do we know that? Because the angels attested to that truth when Jesus was ascended. I call this the forgotten festival. It's not a Jewish festival, it's a purely Christian festival. The Jews have no interest in ascension. I know that there's a great movement and I honour it for those who want to re-establish some of the Jewishness or understand the Jewishness, but there comes a point when you've got to say, this has got nothing to do with Jewishness. This is about being Christian. This same Jesus will so come in like manner as you have seen him go. The reason why we don't celebrate it is not on a Sunday and we're lazy enough to not do anything else but on a Sunday. If we were in some of the more traditional denominations, there would have been a special mass or a special Eucharist or something to mark Ascension Day. But for us it was just Thursday. But it was Ascension Day. So highly significant that the angels appeared to testify to the momentous occasion and to confirm the promise. When Jesus when Mary received the announcement that she was to bear the Christ child, it was an angel who was trusted with that authority. When Joseph was assured that his wife ought to be was not an immoral woman, but a woman of God, it was an angel. It was an angel. And when Jesus was ascended into heaven and the statement is made, this same Jesus, it was an angel. Is there any lesser authority than the angel that says to Mary, you're going to be the mother of the Christ child? No, no lesser authority. Any, any lesser authority than the angel that said to Joseph, Joseph, it's all right, she's a good woman, this is the Holy Spirit that's doing this. Same powerful angels. When Daniel was praying and he couldn't get through to God and the heavens seemed like brass, and you and I have been there, and we think that we've got a problem. When eventually the archangel gets through to Daniel, he said, the minute you started praying, I was sent, but I've had a war in the heavenlies to get through to you. That's how important that moment was because an angel attested it. How important is ascension? That important that an angel attested it. We ought to have another think about this. This same Jesus. This same Jesus you know, we, we are people, and I, I want to say this carefully, I don't want to mis, be misunderstood, but we are so focused on the things that we're going to see on this earth that we forget that Jesus is coming again. He's going to return and stand on this earth and then we ain't seen nothing yet. Even what we see before he comes, as incredible as that might be, we ain't seen nothing yet until he plants his feet fresh on the Mount of Olives. Where is he going to return? To the same place he went from. This same Jesus will reappear on the Mount of Olives just outside of Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey, a couple of miles outside of Jerusalem, an olive farm. He's going to turn up there. Why? Because that's where he left from. I'm New South Wales, born and bred. I'm even wearing blue today, as I should. And I'll wear it on Wednesday too. I will wear blue. That's all right. But do you know that there was a time when Right opposite the heads in Sydney Harbour, some Christians built an amphitheatre and they sold tickets for people to come and, and, and have a front row seat on the day that Jesus was going to walk through the heads and, and come back to earth. <laughs> True. And they got the date wrong. So they said the tickets are good for and they gave them another date. And it's fairly recently, I don't know how recently, but it's only fairly recently that that amphitheatre, the ruins of it, were restored to parkland. How stupid, 
How stupid. Because the book tells us where he's going to come. The book says, this same Jesus shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven. He's going to turn up on the Mount of Olives. This same Jesus. Why the Mount of Olives? Zechariah 14.4 says, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives. Not as magnificent a situation as it would be to come walking through the heads of Sydney Harbour but on the Mount of Olives. You bought tickets. <laughs> Gee, I would reckon they should be worth something by now because, goodness, they should have appreciated, surely. What day? What day is Zechariah prophesying? Zechariah, 450, 500 years before Christ, something like that, maybe a bit more. What day was he prophesying? The day of the Lord's return to earth on the Mount of Olives. Why? Because this same Jesus shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go. His day, in that day his feet shall stand in the, on the Mount of Olives. In Acts 2.22 we read that Jesus of Nazareth was a man approved of God by miracles and wonders. The New King James says attested, attested to by God, attested to. The New International says accredited by God, accredited by God. God the Father did everything he possibly could to affirm that Jesus was the one. When Peter was preaching in Acts chapter 3 on the day that, that he was given the privilege of, 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 of healing the man sitting at the gate beautiful, the lame man who'd been lame for his whole lifetime. On that day when he preached a sermon after that event, when the crowd got so excited, what he said was, God has glorified his son Jesus. You see, when we see healings, it's not about the, the, the pastor, the prophet, the evangelist, the healer, whoever. It's about God glorifying his son. God glorifying his son. And we're going to see God glorifying his son. We're going to see it. Why? Because we get in the road of glorifying. God glorifying his son at times and God's going to have to move apart from us at times to, to, to declare his glory because God wants to glorify his son. The Bible says that if he be lifted up, he will draw all men to himself. God wants to glorify his son, Jesus. This same Jesus shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Just the same way the New American Standard says. Just the same way. Ascension clearly announces the sure and certain hope of the return of Christ to the earth. He's coming again in the flesh. He's coming again in the flesh. And we will rule and reign with him. We will rule and reign with him. You and I. I don't know what my job's going to be. I don't know what your job's going to be. But we will rule and reign with him. That's the promise. I was preaching my heart out years and years ago. We had a little church in Sydney and it was in the midst of a kind of revival that came with the, the start of the charismatic movement back there in the 60s and 70s. And on Sunday night the church was full and I was preaching my heart out and I came to the point in the sermon, I believe that Jesus Christ is coming again in the flesh. Do you? And instead of riotous applause, there was deadly silence. And a little voice from the back of the church wanting to stick up for daddy said, no. <laughs> he was all of two. But nobody was talking to daddy and daddy asked a question. <laughs> but I do believe, I do believe, I do believe this same Jesus is going to stand again on planet Earth as we know it. On planet Earth as we know it. 
turned on the telly this morning and all they wanted to tell me was that a certain young lady has returned to Australia. And it's across the media all over the place. But I want to tell you there's a story coming that my Bible tells me and when it happens, every eye shall see it. Every eye. Every eye. Every eye shall see it. Every eye shall see it. I had somebody come and talk to me one day and asked me about what was going on. She'd been watching a program on the television and suddenly Satan appeared on her screen. And she wanted some understanding of what was going on. And she was under enormous pressure from the enemy at that particular time and we talked about it. But if Satan, just to get at one person, can interrupt the picture on the screen, if every eye is going to see him, suddenly the TVs all over the world are going to show the descending Christ. And not a television camera needed anywhere. It's just going to happen because he said every eye shall see. This same Jesus. Let's turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians. Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians. That's where you're head. Verse 13. 1 Thessalonians 4. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren. I prefer the word ignorant. God doesn't want any ignorant brethren. He wants, he wants learned brethren. He wants people who actually know the book. Do you hear that? He wants people who actually know the book. Not people who think they know the book. He wants people who do know the book, who spend time in the book getting to know the book. I do not want you to be ignorant or uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep so that you will not grieve as do the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. Amen. Be encouraged, be strengthened, comfort with strength. Come forte, Latin word, with strength. Be strengthened by these words. It's not a, oh, dear, 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 dear word. It's a strong word. Be comforted. There's a famous tapestry called the Bayer Tapestry. And in the picture of the Bayer Tapestry, it shows that one of the kings of England fighting the forces of France. And at one point he's shown in this tapestry with his sword and he's poking his soldiers in the backside. And the script underneath the tapestry says, the king comforts his soldiers. He came with strength. The king is with you, boys. Let's go. I'm with you. I'm right here. Let's go. Be comforted. Be strengthened with these words. Jesus is coming again. This same Jesus will so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of the Lord. The shout is the shout of recognition. Remember on the, on the Emmaus Road where the disciples journeyed with Jesus and when they eventually got to Emmaus and he went in to eat with them and as he prayed to bless the food, suddenly their eyes were opened and they realised they'd walked with Jesus and he was gone. And they turned to each other and they said, it is the Lord. That's recognition. And when the, when the shout comes from heaven, it's the shout of recognition. The world will suddenly see he actually is real. Oh, my goodness gracious me. And you and I will say, hallelujah, hallelujah. It is the Lord. He's come again as he said he would. The shout of recognition with the voice of the archangel. That voice is the word of confirmation, calling the dead in Christ and those who remain to meet Christ in the air. Come up, brothers. Come up, sisters. Come and get together. Join the crowd. We're about to have a party. He's coming back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I preached a sermon one day that God loves a party and some very sober looking people wondered what on earth I was on about to. But you know God loves a party and there's going to be a party that day. It's a day of celebration, the voice of recognition and the, the shout of recognition and the voice of confirmation and with the trumpet of the Lord, the sound of declaration. The seventh and last trumpet, according to Re Revelation, is the declaration of Christ. The kingdom of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever. Revelation 11, 15. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of the Lord and of his Christ. This same Jesus is coming again, shall so come as you've seen him go, is our sure and certain hope. Is it your hope today? Your hope today? Your hope today? What does the ascension mean to us today? Jesus said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Not a future hope, but a present opportunity. You shall receive power. As I was praying this morning before we came out to church, I thought the Lord speak to me about one or two people in the room, but the pastor, he spoke about you. <laughs> There's such an incredible anointing on your life and I think it would be fair to say that some are jealous of that. But God said to you, I'm not going to lift that anointing in any way and I'm not going to diminish it in any way, but share it as much as you can because I want it out there. I want it out there. I want it out there. I want people to be as hungry as you are to embrace that same anointing because whilst it's the unique anointing on your life, it's not from a unique spirit, it's from the Holy Spirit and he wants to share that anointing. And I want to say this morning, and I say it with all my heart, thank God we haven't got a selfish pastor. Because every time he comes near me, he wants to encourage me and speak into my heart, even this morning, to draw out more of the anointing. You will receive power. You will receive power. You will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You will receive power. I want to say this this morning, and if there's any doubt in anybody's mind where I come from, I want to say that this is a second blessing. A second blessing. There are those in the church who want to argue that when the Holy Spirit came in, when we were saved, that was the anointing. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. If it was, why did the disciples receive the Holy Spirit and then told to wait for the promise? Have a look with me, will you please? Have a look with me. In Luke 24, 49, Luke 24, 49, the same occasion that we're talking about here, the very same occasion, the, the, the occasion of, of um, the, the ascension of Christ, Luke 24, 49. Jesus was in the upper room. Verse 49, Luke 24, Behold, I am sending forth the promise of my Father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Now many people will want to say, oh, that happened to the disciples in John chapter 20. It didn't happen to the disciples in John chapter 20. Go to John chapter 20 and you'll see what I'm saying to you. In John chapter 20 and verse 22, Jesus, verse 21, so Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Do you understand that it was that day, resurrection evening, that they were born again? Jesus didn't have a group of disciples who were born again men. He hadn't died and been glorified. How could they be born again? 
You can't be born again until Jesus is died and risen. So after he had risen, the first thing he does is make sure the boys are with him. And he goes to the boys and he breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. But Luke says on the same occasion, he said, and wait for the promise. If you got it all when you were saved, then there's nothing to wait for. If you got what you got when you were saved, thank God. But if you haven't waited for the more, if you haven't pressed in for the more, if you haven't waited for the promise, if you haven't claimed the promise, then you haven't got the anointing that God wants on your life. And God desperately needs an anointed church. He is sick to death, I believe, of a wishy-washy church. In fact, in, in the book of Revelations in chapter 3, he tells us what he thinks of a wishy-washy church. I want to spew it out of my mouth. Oh, what an ugly picture. What a true picture. He wants an empowered church, a powerful church. It's the essential beginning to be filled with the Holy Spirit, with the breath of God, for God to breathe on us. That's the essential beginning. We're not talking about being born again when we're talking about being clothed with the Spirit, being empowered from on high. But unless we've been born again, there's no point in talking about the second blessing. No point whatsoever. We need to be filled with the breath of God, the breath of inner life, the impartation of spiritual life. But with it comes the pledge also of power to come, to put on power and authority, to be filled with life. In the dialogue with Nicodemus in John chapter 3, Jesus makes it clear that unless a man is born both of water, by which he means natural birth, and of the spirit, by which he means spiritual birth, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Only those who are already in the kingdom of God can be empowered by God from on high. And how can they be empowered from on high? Because they believe that this same Jesus has said, tarry till you get it. Tarry till you get it. Tarry till you get it. When Adam and Eve were created by God, the breath of God gave them life. The very breath of God, Genesis 2.7. Job says in Job 33, the spirit of God has made me and the breath of the Almighty has given me life. In the prophecy of Ezekiel 37, O breath, breathe upon these slain that they may live. It was the breath of God that gave life to the dry bones. The breath of God that gave life to the dry bones. Ascension Day clearly has great significance for the church and we do well to revisit this event and see that we are participating in all that it promises. I thought it was going to be a bit cooler this morning, so I brought my jacket. I didn't need it, but I do need it now. Come here, Cyril. My friend Cyril, turn around. I want to put my cloak upon you. Did I do anything inside him? Not a thing. Not a thing. But my Bible says that when the anointing comes upon us, we are clothed clothed and it, the word clothed literally means to put on like a garment to put on like a garment we press into god that he might put on us the cloak of his anointing thank you my friend it's as simple as that i didn't do anything to his inner life i just simply if it had been a cold day made him a bit warmer but when God clothes us with power from on high, when he puts his cloak upon us, his mantle, if you like, that has already been referred to this morning, the mantle that he puts upon us, if that's the way it is, if God clothes us, then we are endued with power from on high. I want to say and I want to close with this this morning. There are three things that ascension does for us. Three things. Firstly, it confirms the reality of our salvation. The word is confirms. It confirms the reality of our salvation. Purchased through the broken body and shed blood of Jesus. We've celebrated that this morning. But that's our salvation that we've been celebrating this morning. 
I don't know what's happening next Sunday. We're Pentecostals in a sense. We celebrate Pentecost every Sunday. Maybe we'll do something special. If there's going to be baptism, that's special. But we celebrate the death and resurrection of Christ every time we hold communion. But that's the confirmation that we are the children of God, that we've been born of God, that his, the shed blood and the broken body and shed blood of Christ have been made real to us by the work of the Holy Spirit, seeking us out, filling us with life-giving breath of God. The second thing Ascension Day does for us is that it clarifies for us. It makes clear to us that God has plans to us to have more than life in the Spirit. God has plans for us to have more than life in the Spirit. More than life in the Spirit. Our pastor often talks about people sitting on their blessed assurance. If all you're doing is sitting on your blessed assurance, well, I want to tell you God's got more for you than just sitting on your blessed assurance, more than just having been born again by the Spirit. God's got more for you. And Ascension says, wait till you get it. The third thing that Ascension does, it ensures us of the Lord's ultimate victory. It convinces us that this same Jesus shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. His second coming to earth in the flesh and his rule and reign on this earth as king of kings and lord of lords. Oh, I believe in a new heavens and a new earth. Oh, yes, I do. I believe that this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through, as the old song said. My treasures are laid up somewhere the angels beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door and I'm not at home in this world anymore. That may well be true, but while I'm here, I've got a job to do. And while I'm here, there's an anointing on my life. And while I'm here, I've got to use that anointing to the glory of God. Oh, I had my 70th a few weeks ago. Wow, 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 wow. I feel as eager to preach the word of God today as I did when I was a teenager preaching in Youth for Christ. I, there is something in, undiminished in my spirit this morning. There is something undiminished in my spirit this morning. God put an anointing on my life. When I graduated from Bible college, the Salvation Army Commissioner said to me, Lieutenant Christopher Pack, you are appointed to the training college. And I thought, oh, I've got to repeat, have I? Suddenly I discovered that I was a teacher. I'm not a teacher. My, my daughter, our daughter, has a Bachelor of Teaching and a Master's of Education or a Bachelor of Education, Master's of Teaching or something. She's a teacher. I have an anointing. And I treasure that anointing. I treasure that anointing. But if all I do is sit on my blessed assurance, what's the point of the anointing? I want to say to you this morning, if you haven't responded already today, to have that anointing that is on your life quickened, then you ought to make it to the front before this meeting is closed, that you might have that anointing quickened on your life. But I also want to say this this morning, and it's very clear in my mind. I want to say to you this morning that if you were to die tonight, and as you stood before God and he said to you, why should I welcome you into my heaven, what would you say? need to say more than that. Sorry, but you need to say more than that. The word says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. In other words, declaring that Jesus has become Lord of glory through his death. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead through his resurrection. And unless you can give that answer and say, yes, Chris, this morning I absolutely believe that Jesus died for my sin and has risen for my, for my justification. Unless you can say that this morning, I want to say to you, there's a call to you specifically today to come and accept Christ as Saviour because you need to do that. And when that happens, the Spirit of God will come into your life and you will be born anew of the Spirit. But if that's all that's happened and you haven't been empowered from on high, then you need to respond to that call today because what's the point of wallowing around in, in less than God had for you? When Moses was preaching before the children of, cross, of Israel crossed over into the Promised Land, he said to them, He has brought us out to bring us in. He wants you to enjoy the fullness of God. He's brought you out. He's saved you that you might enjoy the fullness of God. You need to be empowered by God from on high this morning.
We're going to sing. And when we sing, if you should come this morning, you come. And there are some people here this morning, and Suzanne, you're one of them. God this morning wants to say to you, my daughter, it's all right. It's all right. I hear your hungry heart this morning. Oh, I hear your hungry heart. And the word from my word to you this morning is, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be filled. Hallelujah. Frank, I want to speak to you this morning. You have a unique anointing on your life. And some people get a, all sorts of anxious about that anointing. But you ain't seen nothing yet. I think there's going to come a refining of that anointing yet for the glory of God. Holy Spirit, come. Why don't we stand and sing? And if you should come this morning, you come. You come. And stars Joy, ta, 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 ta. The morning sun was dead. The Saviour of the world was fallen. His body on the cross, his blood poured out 